Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to discuss the temperature of the chromosphere. The chromosphere is the site of weak emission lines observed during a solar eclipse. In this video, I mentioned that the chromosphere extends two to 3,000 kilometers above the photosphere, although chromospheric lines from calcium-2 can reach heights of 15,000 kilometers or more. Such heights are well into the coronal region. I have argued that chromospheric emission lines are extremely important as they are telling us something about chemical reactions taking place in this region of the sun. We will revisit this topic soon, but for the time being, I just want to briefly discuss the temperature of the chromosphere. In the standard model, the chromosphere is said to have temperatures of about 6,000 Kelvin near the photosphere. It then cools slightly with elevation, as you can see in this figure. Then it experiences a meteoric rise in temperature as it approaches the corona. The problem is that these temperatures are being established by observing electronic emission lines. However, such lines are not in thermal equilibrium with the radiation field or with other atoms or ions or electrons in the surrounding region. That is why emission lines cannot be used to set the temperature, as I have discussed in this video. Harold Ziering has made this point clearly in his textbook, which I cite below. Astronomers have used the Saha equation to calculate the ratio of ions in the chromosphere and the corona. However, the Saha equation requires thermal equilibrium, which is not present in the solar atmosphere. As a result, use of the Saha equation can lead to errors of 100 trillion in ion level ratios, as you can learn in Zirin's text. The fact that the corona is not in thermal equilibrium is one of the take home messages from the video on the corona, where the experiments with silver clusters in the laboratory were discussed. You recall that the silver clusters were sitting at temperatures of 10 Kelvin, but were emitting lines which could be interpreted by astronomers as corresponding to temperatures in the thousands of Kelvin. Clearly, this cannot be right. As a result, it is not proper to obtain chromospheric temperatures from electronic emission lines, because those lines are not produced by processes in thermal equilibrium. So is there a way to get an idea of the apparent temperature of the chromosphere? The only way this can be achieved is by analyzing absorption lines, and there is a very important set of such lines from carbon monoxide which occurs in the infrared in the chromosphere. They are not electronic emission lines which arise when an electron makes a transition from atomic energy levels. Rather, they are vibrational rotational absorption lines. They arise when the carbon monoxide molecule is vibrating and rotating in response to temperatures in its local environment. The molecule can get hit, for instance, by other atoms and molecules in the same region and is inherently tied to the kinetic energy of those collisions. The carbon monoxide is also being irradiated by light from the photosphere. Carbon monoxide vibrational rotational lines are unique. They are reporting a real kinetic temperature at their local environment, and that is why their presence is such a headache for the astronomers. Carbon monoxide lines were first discovered in the chromosphere in 1972, as you can learn in this paper. The lines are so important that astronomers now use the term chromosphere to refer to the region where they originate. That is because the carbon monoxide lines indicate that the chromosphere is cooling with elevation, as you can see in this figure. Note, when chromospheric temperatures are measured with emission lines, they eventually rise dramatically with elevation above the photosphere, just as I had discussed above. This is denoted by the solid dark lines. However, if you measure the temperature with carbon monoxide vibrational rotational lines, the temperature is dropping with elevation as noted by the solid blue line. That is a serious problem for the astronomers. How do they get around it and still maintain that the chromosphere gets hotter with elevation? They invent carbon monoxide clouds in order to localize the effect and permit the rest of the chromosphere to remain heated with elevation. They want carbon monoxide clouds, which they cannot see, to sequester the cooling, which is contrary to their models, but all the while they ignore 
the condensed nature of the spicules which they can see. Here is what two solar physicists recently wrote about the problem. The presence of cool molecular carbon monoxide at temperatures below the previously established temperature minimum has challenged our understanding of the basic thermal structure of the solar atmosphere and undermined our spectral diagnostics of cool stellar atmospheres. Astronomers now speak of the cold heart of the solar chromosphere as you can see in this paper. Hopefully now you understand that the chromosphere is in fact cooling with elevation, not heating. The carbon monoxide lines are the only lines that can be trusted to give accurate temperatures. They cannot be discounted just to save the standard model of the sun. Carbon monoxide lines are telling us that the chromosphere is cooling with elevation, not heating. It is inappropriate to use electronic emission lines in order to set chromospheric and coronal temperatures. That was a lesson from the silver cluster experiments. So if you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, support it with a like, subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.